most powerful name, we pray. Amen. And the church say powerful, amen. Amen. Amen and amen. We thank God once again this morning for bringing us to his presence. May his name be praised forever in the name of Jesus. In our series of how to make progress in your prayer life, this morning by the grace of God, we'll be looking at the Father heart of God in answering prayers. The Father heart of God in answering prayers. The Father heart of God in answering prayers. So many people might not really be able to understand the Father heart of God in answers to their prayers. Why? Because they don't have good relationship with their father. I mean their biological parents. And it's one of the reasons why the absent father syndrome is a major problem in the society. Where the fathers are absent. And in any society, in any home, in any life, where the father is absent, there is always a problem. May your father not be absent, both physically and spiritually, in the name of Jesus. Now, if you have a good relationship with your father, unfortunately, we have so many bully fathers that bully their children everywhere. And the moment you hear the arm of the car, the sound of the horn of the car of daddy coming, everybody's camper for safety. The lion of the house is coming. And everybody will just go and sit down hmm, as if something is wrong somewhere. But God does not intend fathers to be like that. Oh no. God intend fathers to be caring. God intend fathers to be the best gist partners for the children. God intend fathers to be someone that you can talk to and you can relate with. Hallelujah. So if you understand and for someone that has a very lovely father, then you can to pray will not be difficult for you. And I want to show you that. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7 from verse 9. He said, You parents. You know, I can understand it better because I'm a parent. And Jesus was saying here, yeah, he said, You parents. If your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? And that's a mighty and powerful question. If my boy asks me and says, Daddy, I am hungry, I want to eat bread. Will I going to give him a stone? Will I? My boys are here. When you are hungry and you say, Daddy, I'm hungry, I need bread. Have I ever given you stone? No. So, now, look at this. He said, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? I think we should all be able to answer that if they parents. Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? He said, so, if you wicked, If you wicked parents, if you sinful people know how to give good gifts, if you wicked know how to give good things to your children, how much more Will your heavenly father? Oh my, I, I am praying that Lord will help the understanding of someone to comprehend the father heart of God when it comes to prayers. If you wicked parents, sinful parents, know how to give good things to your children, how much more? Now let's start by analyzing this. We have a God that sent his son and his reign to both the righteous and the wicked. We have a God, we are dealing with a God here. We are not even talking of the fatherhood now. Even to the sinners, even to the wicked, even to those that, are, that does not, even to the hatest. He gave them bread. He gave them life. He gave them cars. 
he gave them houses he gave them anything you can say good now you that you are not a child of god you now said it is not the will of god for me to prosper as in where do you get that mentality from that must be from the devil because if god will give things even to those that does not know him of course he gave them life he gave them the sun he gave them the hair the breathe because for the person that God denied bread, one is dead. And if you are to be sustained by oxygen, of course you will have to spend your fortune to sustain that. So, if the wicked parents will not maltreat their children when they ask for the necessities of life, I don't think God will ever do that to deny him. So if we can further see to the fullest extent of their ability that their children get what they ask, that they are fed, clothed, happy, prosperous, healed. Is there a father that will be looking at his sick child dying and will not do anything about it? Is it possible? Have you ever seen that before? That must be an irresponsible and extremely extra wicked father. Prosperous, healed. Have you seen a wealthy father? I will be looking at his child suffering on the street. I will not do anything about it. As in, I don't know. I don't know. And you know that this is my child. Even if he will not do it for the sake of his pride. He will do it for the sake of the father. When people look at his chest and they say, ah, ah. And we know your father is, he has money. See how you are suffering. That man is irresponsible. Don't mind him. If you see the rich spending lavishly on their children, it is because they don't want to be insulted by the society. That means if God is my father and does not want the society, the nations, to insult him, then automatically he must see to it that everything I need is taken care of. I'm talking of the Father heart of God in answering your prayers. The Father will protect his child and ensure that his child is free from suffering. The question is, how much more God? And that was the question Jesus asked. How much more? How much more? It's not just about how much. It's about how much more. If my God, my Father, owns the cattle on a thousand hills, and he owns silver and gold, I, his child, I don't have any reason why I should not benefit from what belongs to my Father. Either by virtue of right or by virtue of inheritance, I have every access to what belongs to my father. And remember, I told you about prayers that prayer is your right. Prayer is about your right making demands on your rights. When my child asks me and said, Daddy, I am hungry, it is his right to ask me for food. And I must make that provision available. Excuse me. They didn't say they want to come to the head. I'm the one that said I want a child. You know, the, the African mentality is a very terrible one that believes as your child grows up, it must be your child that should take care of you. Does he ask you that I want to come to the head? In fact, till death, you are responsible to your child of course fine when he becomes well with him and it's fine he can begin to reciprocate but you press with the lord that till death i should have enough even to be able to give to my children such that even at death i can have inheritance to give to them uh, just imagine if all you have to leave behind when you are gone is all that your children bought for you then you don't leave behind any inheritance. No, 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 no. So, how much?
much more God. If I, a sinful and wicked man, will know and think of how to prepare the future for my children, how much more God will prepare a better future for you. And he said, I know the thoughts I think towards you. They are thoughts of good and not of evil to give you a future and an end. He cares about you, not just your present. As much as I care for the present of my child, I also care for his future. The question is, does I desire my children to fail? How will I under heaven? Then how will God desire you to fail? Oh, yes, fine. What about times when my child is not serious in school? Must he feel? Yes, so that I can learn. So there are times that God permits failure so you can learn. But it does not mean that God wanted you to remain as a failure. Oh, no. I'm talking about the Father heart of God in answering your prayers. You know, some of us, all our mentality is all about there is a God up there always looking for my faults and errors and he's always trying to kill me. He's always looking for my faults and once he picks my fault, he capitalizes on that. Oh, that's not correct. In fact, he talks about your sin. He said he threw them in the ocean of forgetfulness. I am talking about the father you have. That's your father. God. You know what? When you commit a sin, no matter how terrible it may be, and you approach God and say, I say, Lord, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And you don't go back into that sin. You know what God did? Where it was written, he tear it out. The moment you say, Father, please forgive me, the blood on the cross drops on it. Number one, it's wiped clean the slate. The document is teared apart. And it is thrown into the ocean of forgetfulness. Where it will no longer be remembered. So whenever devil is bringing those things back, it is just the devil. And that's why I say, therefore there is no condemnation. God no longer condemn you. It is just the devil's tactics to deny you of the benefits that belong to you from your father. Not like some children that their parents are so wealthy. Yes, somebody is telling them that your father hates you. And he's out there suffering because he believes my father hates me. There was a story of a man who was about to die and he told his son, pick one gift of all of these. When he doesn't know what to take, the father said, okay, I'm going to give you a gift. Of all my wealth and properties, I'm going to give you a gift. Then he gave him one gift. And what was that? It was wrapped, well wrapped. And inside it, is the document that contains all the property the man ever had on it. He wrapped it and placed it securely in the midst of what was wrapped. And the guy was so excited. Yes, my father has given me a gift. Only for him to open it. And by the time he opened it, it was a Bible. And as soon as he saw the only Bible, he just threw it down. I said, oh my goodness. Why would my father be this wicked? That of all things he have, the only thing he can give me is the only Bible. And for some good years, he was going about suffering, going about suffering, going about suffering, going about suffering. Going about suffering. And people were looking and saying, ah, we thought that your father had, why are you suffering? And he said, my father is wicked. He's not concerned about me. When he wants to go, when he was about going, he left me only the Bible. I'm not him. Then somebody said, have you checked that Bible? He said, Bible? What do I have to check in the Bible? I know Bible is the word of God. So what do I have to check? I'm not even interested. What is it in the Bible that I've not read? The one your father gave you, have you checked it? After about 10 years, he went back. Of course, it's a document. It does not expire. He went back opened it. As he was opening it, he was seeing papers that was well arranged. Several pages. Several pages. Several pages. Just little. Several pages. And he was seeing assets. 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 
to bow. And I'll be suffering at the bow. Oh, Daddy, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't know you care so much about me. And this is the exact thing that so many of us were going through. You see, all that you ever need has been provided in the world. As much as you left your Bible loved, your destiny and your life is loved. As soon as you open your Bible, your life and destiny remains open. So the Bible must become your best friend. Glory to God. So if we can, Father, we go to any land to make the children comfortable, successful, enjoy good things of life, how much more God? How much more God? If I will go to any land to ensure that my children are fine, to what land do you think God will not go? And that's why I said, I will be an enemy to anyone I want to be an enemy to you. He said, I will fight your battles. He said, I will take care of you. And when God said that, you better believe it. Because he meant it. He's a father that cares. What a friend we have been, Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God and prayers. Oh, what sin we often forfeit. And the line I love so much, he said, Oh, what speechless pain we bear. Why? All because we do not carry everything to God. In See, you suffer so much when you don't take things to God in prayers. Can you imagine my boy is hungry and he was crying? Just crying. I'm not talking of a baby. I'm talking of a mature boy. About five years old. About ten years old. Hungry and he's just crying. What do you think I would do? I'm going to look for a king. And flood you. You don't tell me why you are crying, you are just crying. I'm going to add to his tears. But if he approached me and said, Daddy, I am hungry. And when I know that legitimately he's hungry, I said, Ah, you've not eaten his money. Why? What happened? I must make an immediate provision. I am telling you about the Father heart of God. That the same way I will have to handle my child better than that is the way that God handles with his children. I mean in a better way. Much, much better. And the same way that when my child is asking for something that is not legitimate or that is not right, that is not proper and I will not give him, is the same way that God also handles us. Glory to God. So stop that belief that God is always with a cane or club, always looking for your mistake so he can flog you or to hit your head. In fact, God cares for you much more than your earthly parent does. Because God will also give you what your earthly parents can give you. And in fact, God will still give you more. Look at Luke chapter 9. Luke 11. Luke 11 from verse 9. Luke 11 from verse number 9. It said, Let me read verse 11. You fathers, if your children ask for a fish, do you give them a snake instead? Or, if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. So if you seem fool people now to give good things and good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who are asking? It's a matter of ask. There is nothing that God will deny you. Stop believing that God is only interested in your spiritual well-being. Let me read Third John and verse 2 for you. Third John, verse 2. He said, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in every way and that your body may keep well. Even as I know your soul keeps well and prospers. You need to read that again. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in every way. Friends, it is God's will for you that you prosper in every way. 
Stop believing the lies of the devil that says you God does not want you to prosper, that God does not want this. God, no, somebody said, No, you see, all of those are just lies from the pit of hell that want to keep you away from the benefits that God has in store for you. By the virtue of God's intention, it is for you to prosper in all ways. He said, and that your body may keep well. That means God has health and wellness in mind for you. Sickness can never be his will for you. And I decree in the life of anyone that is sick, receive your healing in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. He said, even as I know your soul keeps well and prosper. That means God is not only interested in your spiritual well-being, He's interested in your total well-being. That you prosper physically, spiritually, financially, maritally, emotionally, etc. In all ways. Hallelujah. Now the question somebody may want to ask me is this. Does God hear all our prayers? And I tell you, the answer is a capital Y E S. Yes. Does God hear us all our prayers? Yes. The same way when my child come and said, Daddy, this, 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 this. Did I hear him? Yes. Anytime my child come and say, Daddy, 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 I'll say yes, yes, yes. Either he has a legitimate thing to ask or illegitimate. The fact that he called daddy and make a request means I will hear. In that true phone, or he just shouted my name, or he sent someone to me, whatever means that he used to call daddy, 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 as long as I'm available, I hear. And since God is ever available, anytime you call on him, he hears. Does God hear my prayers? Yes. And as I said, through any means available that my child used to communicate me. Either on phone. That means you can speak from your heart. You can speak from your mind. You can speak from anywhere. Does God hear all? Yes, he does. He hears all your prayers. Except if you don't pray. And I don't have the time to start showing you several ways that men pray. Nehemiah said, and I appeared before the king, and the king saw me, and my face was looking so down, and he said, you have never looked like this before. What is happening to you? Nehemiah said, and I prayed. Excuse me. Was he speaking in tongues? No. Was he shouting, father, 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 father. Oh, no. He said, and I prayed. That means he said it in his heart. And as he was saying it, God had it and answered it. He said, I prayed. Anna. Anna was pouring out his heart, yet her mouth was not open. Such that the prophets look and say, Ah, you this woman, you are drunk. So you can use so many means, so many means to pray. There is no particular method or form of prayers. You don't, uh, you have to stand like this or bend like this. You can kneel, you can roll. Any means available, you can use to pray. The Lord will still respond. You can shout, you can you can chuckle, you can only don't murmur. So, if my child will call me with any available means and I will respond, that means any prayer you pray, God hears. Now the question is this. Does God answer all our prayers? Does God answer all my prayers? The answer also is very simple. The answer is also a capital Y E S. Yes. God hears all prayers and he also answers all prayers. You said, oh, Pastor, are you sure what you are saying? That God answers all prayers? I'm saying, yes, he does. But this is the way it is. He answers in three forms. There is a yes, there is a no, there is a wait. Now look at this. My child called me and said, Daddy, I am hungry. 
And I told you, it's okay. Mommy is cooking. He, and he went away and said, uh, and I told daddy that I am hungry. And daddy did not say anything. Did I not say anything? I said something. I said, wait, the food is not done yet. You know, the problem with many of us is we don't take wait as an answer. We don't take no as an answer. The only answer we have said is a yes. Now, another time my child came and said, Daddy, a boy of 10 years and said, Daddy, I want to go and see one of my friends and I want to ride your car. Can you give me the key? What would I tell him? Would I say, wait? I would just tell him, no! Then he went on and said, and I asked Daddy, I want to ride this car and Daddy did not answer me. Did I not answer him? I answered! And he told him, no! And maybe at another time he came, Maybe he just woke up and after waking up, he greeted and he has prayed and said, Daddy, I am hungry. And the food, before he wakes up, the mom has prepared food. And I said, take it there. And he went and said, ah, Daddy answered me today. Since all these days I've been asking Daddy so many things, it is only today that Daddy answered me. Is that correct? No. In each of his requests, I've been answering him. I've been answering him. I've been answering him. So, does God hear our prayers? Yes. Does God answer our prayers? Yes, He does. And the answer can be a yes, a no, or a wait. Now, the other time I told my boy, wait, the food is not ready. Yet. If he goes about and said, I've been hungry since, and daddy did not do anything about it, and I've been telling daddy since. No, 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 no. I've answered him. It's just that like he does not want to accept the answers I've given him. You only need to exercise the little patience. If you just jump out and begin to cry, eh, eh, I've been angry and I told daddy, daddy did not do anything about it. No, sometimes we do start anything and God look at and say, oh no, we are not getting it right. May the Lord give you understanding of all I've said in the name of Jesus. So when we say good things, so, Anything called good is good. The difference from danger, preservation from evil, body healing, health, material prosperity, cars, houses, money, children, marriage, breakthrough, etc., or any other thing to pray is a good thing and is a good gift. Then ask to receive it and stop questioning the will of God about it. You should no longer ask if it is God's will for you to prosper. You should stop asking if it is God's will to give you a child. That is if you are still trusting the Lord for fruit of the womb. And you are saying, I don't know, maybe it is even the will of God that you have a child. Why would it not be the will of God to give you a child? If a child is a good thing, that means the Lord will give you your will. If good health is a good thing, and God we give even much more. Definitely. Anything called good is what God has intention of giving you. Anything called good. It is in God's plan, intention and agenda to release it to you. I am praying for you this morning. You shall not miss the good things of life. In the name of Jesus. So, stop asking, is it the will of God? That I should be the house. He has already said you shall be the house you and you will live in it. So nobody will inherit your inheritance. That means it is his will already. Whatever that the word of God has made provision for, don't bother to ask if it is the will of God again. What is God's will for your life? Check the word. If God has will that should be in health, then sickness cannot still be his will. Except in, the, in, in, in situations where he wants to accomplish something out of that and for his glory alone. And even in that, he will tell you specifically what is accomplishing with that. Glory to God. So stop asking questions that God has already provided answers in his word. You should know that God means so well when he talks about good things. So I have exposed to you this day 
the father heart of God. In that, if there is anything that God desires for you, is that you always come and ask. Even if you will ask, you will seek, you will knock, then the door will be open. You will find and you will receive. And thus God hears all my prayers is a capital Y E S. Yes. Does God answers all my prayers is a capital Y E S. Yes. He hears and he answers. It is in your own ability to understand what is the answer that the Lord is giving me at a time like this. So I'm challenging you and I'm encouraging you this day that you remove all of those mentalities that are around that devil painted for you. The mentality that makes God look like that wicked man that is not interested in your well-being. Oh yeah, the scripture says through many sufferings we will make it to the kingdom of God. So some of you think all that that is saying is that you must die poor and wretched. That's not correct. Was Abraham rich? Yes. Was Solomon rich? Yes. Was David rich? Yes. Was Jesus rich? Yes. But when we talk about sufferings, we talk about those things, those challenges of life that you will go through. We talk about what it means to carry and bear the cross, the shame of the cross. Those things will be there. And there is nothing we can do about it. They will be there. You must know what does God say about my situation in this matter. Whatever thing that the word of God has made provisions for, it is already his will. Why must you be backward when he has said you will be the head? That is the father heart of God. And I read again to you Matthew chapter 7. The same place we've read. You parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone? Oh, I can understand it better because I'm a parent. I know when my child is hungry and asks me for a food. If I don't want to be disgraced in the community, and my child is crying, and everybody is asking, why are, you, why are you crying? It's because I am hungry since money and that did not give me food. You know, people will look at me and say, Imagine this man. This boy was gently in heaven, sitting with God. He's the one that said, I want to give birth to. Why will you give birth to a child that you cannot take care of? And because God does not want to receive such an insult from the hidden, then he ensures that he takes excellent care of you from time to time. The Father heart of God in answering your prayer. Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? And Jesus answered, He said, Of course not. It is never. So if you sinful people, you know, sometimes, sometimes we indict ourselves. If I, as a parent, know that I must take every responsibility for my child how will God be my father and will not take every responsibility for my life and of course I can't expect my child will not expect me to provide the food and still come and feed him he should be able to eat by himself that is where your responsibility comes in but the question is this is God your father? If you expect me to take responsibility for my child, yes, I must. But must I still take responsibility for the child of another person? I don't think that should be necessary. Even if I do, I only do out of, out of common good. And that is what God does to the unbelievers. He gave them certain things. He gave them certain things. He gave them certain things. Out of common goods. Do you want to receive much more than that? And that's why, you know, sometimes we say, 
things that unbelievers can get, they are not really necessarily prosperity anymore. You're talking about cars, houses, this, that. Those things are not what you struggle about. They are normal things that God will give everybody, everybody that cares and can afford to get one. Remember, I've told not everyone will be the house, not everyone will buy a car. But for as many that can afford to buy one, it may seem. The question I'm asking you is, is God your father? Because if God is not your father, he can't take responsibility for your life. God only take... Now, if my boy called me father, I said, Daddy, I respond immediately. And then a person called Daddy, I may not respond. I may look and say, okay, maybe he's just trying to... Maybe he's just trying to plead. It doesn't go beyond that. But when it comes to my child, I call dad. From long, I can recognize and say, that is the voice of my child. And that's why Jesus said, I know my sheep. My sheep knows me. Once they hear my voice, they come to me. Do you recognize his voice? Is God your father? Because if he is not your father, he can't take responsibility for your life. Perhaps one of the reasons why you've not received answers to your prayers is because you have not been enrolled into the family of God. Perhaps God is not yet your father. And if God is not your father, there is no way you can get answers from him. I want to give you a privilege of coming to him this morning. To approach the throne of mercy that you can be enrolled as one of the son in the kingdom. As one of the daughter in the kingdom. Because that is what guarantees your access to God. And that is what enlisted God to become your father and take responsibility for your life. Alright, if you want to do that this morning, will you pray just this simple prayer and say, Father, I am sorry for going away from you. I am like a prodigal child. I thought I can undo my life alone. But lo and behold, I have discovered that I can go too far with things. In fact, I feel stuck at the moment. Lord, I accept your lordship over my life as my father. I confess and forsake my sins. Please accept me and lead me to your family. Make me your son in the name of Jesus. Thank you for accepting me. I'll forever love you, Lord, and continue to remain in your family. Thank you, Father. In Jesus, the most powerful name, I pray. Amen. Father, we give you praise. Thank you, Father, for your people. Be lifted in the name of Jesus. I pray for you. May you henceforth begin to enjoy the fatherhood of God. The Father heart of God and the fatherly care of God in the name of Jesus. Henceforth, you no longer live like an orphan, but you shall begin to enjoy the care of God as a father in the name of Jesus. I pray for someone here. Everything that God is capable of doing, may they be evident in your life in the name of Jesus. As from today, God shall begin to take care of you. He will cater for you. He will take care of you. He will attend to you. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. And thank you, Father. In Jesus, the most powerful name, we pray. Amen.